Welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. This lesson is part of Project Pack number 11. Wow. I know. My name's Martha Huggins. This is my sister, Molly Holova. And this Project Pack will be featuring a new member of our Zentangle tile family. Woo -woo. We're so excited. <laughs> uh, we're calling it the Zentangle Phi Tile. This beautiful new rectangular tile is die cut like our other tiles to five proportions. This new tile is a wonderful canvas to learn a little about the magic of phi and also explore the Zentangle method. So get ready to dabble in some geometry and divine proportion, um, all with using the Fibonacci sequence and in a very Zentangle way, of course. In this series, we will also dig deep into the concept of fragments and reticula and introduce some techniques of using chalk pencils to add a little bit of color. So I just started opening mine up. I got a little eager here. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be working with the materials found in these project packs um, envelopes. These are available from some of our certified Zentangle teachers and also at Zentangle.com. If you don't have a project pack, we always encourage folks to follow along with these lessons with whatever you have at home. So please don't stop here if you don't have these particular materials. We, we really want you to just join us with um, any, any way that you can. We do recommend watching the introduction video that goes with this series first, but then all of the other videos that are part of Project Back 11 can be viewed in any order. So, you ready, ready Martha? I'm ready. All right, so inside my tile envelope, I have these five tiles, and they're, they're super beautiful, and there's so much thought and history that goes along with how sacred geometry and and the sort of the study of phi has been a part of the Zentangle story that I feel like these tiles are sort of loaded with like love and all this kind of like fun stuff. So I'm pretty excited about them. Well, they're beautiful. They are beautiful. Even without tangling them. Yet. I know. <laughs> and this is the back side. Just imagine what you will make of the front side. So I'm going to take one of my phi tiles. That's what I'm going to be working on here today um, on this beautiful 100% cotton paper working on white is um this whole project pack will be working on white and then i have my phi marcus which is this really cool tool that we're going to be playing with as well and then as far as um pens and pencils always grateful for our partners that we get um our our zentangle um tools, tools. from it's just awesome to have people that are so passionate about what they do um like we are from Sakura, they have, you obviously see us working with these often, but we're going to be working with a 01 and then also a graphic one. I'm not sure if we'll use the graphic one today on today's tile, but throughout the series, we will definitely see us working with that. And then we have some really cool chalk pastel pencils. Every um, project pack has a different combination and variety of colors. Looks like me and Martha got a yellow ochre, a scarlet red, and a lavender, but... Um, you might have different ones than we do. And then a number of tortillons so that you can really play with the colors without muddying them up and um, a graphite pencil. And then a sharpener that's um, really good for the, the chalk pencils. You can probably do your graphite in there, but sometimes I like to use this uh, as my special sharpener just for my colored pencils. There we go. I think we're ready to rock and roll, Martha. Let's do it. I'm going to start with um, the Phi Marcus here, and I'm going to take my, my Phi tile, and I am going to um, line it up. And, and you can see that this actually has like different ways that you can do it. You can do it horizontally, um, or you can actually fit it vertically here. I am for this particular I'm just going to use it as a reference to sort of play with some measuring out. And, and, and if you don't have this, don't worry about it. You can just kind of guess. We're, we're playing with Phi, but we're using it as, a, as sort of a fun platform, but it, it's nothing you have to attach yourself to. So I have my... It's a lot like a string, and it's a suggestion of how to get started, but um, you, know, you have permission to... Go, go in your own direction, right? Really. Exactly. I love that um, analogy. So I have mine sort of laid out right here, if you can see. So I have it on the bottom where this phi tile and, um, would fit. And then you can see these diagonal lines. 
those are going to help us sort of measure out where these sweet spots are. So I just want to actually put a little notch right there where the, um, the C, I guess, comes down. And then I'm going to flip it around. And this time, um, because I wanted to kind of, I want to figure out this line here, I'm going to notch where the, the B comes on this side. Okay. And then actually what I'd like to do at this point in time is just eyeball really lightly a line that connects those. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a little reference line. Okay. Okay. So now that I have this one line here, I'm going to actually put my file tie tile on the horizontal way. And this time I'm going to notch both B and C here. I'm going to flip it over. Notch B and C again. And just simply kind of really lightly put down a little reference point on, um, on there. And this is just like such a really, it's almost like um, sort of just giving us something to draw on top of, but I don't want you to get married to it. Like, just use it as a reference. Married to it. <laughs> I know. Something like that. Anyway, at this point, we're going to pick up our pens. So we're going to be playing with a, a tangle that I feel like I, I teach a lot because I love it. And it, it's just one of those tangles that I find to sneak up in so many tiles everywhere and it's one of my favorites and it's um a little apropos because it's actually in full bloom right now the the actual item that it's um its namesake is and that's poke root and we're gonna be just working with poke root today but we're gonna do it in a way that's a little bit different um, we're gonna do it in a very similar way to the way we draw a tangle called vertigo so we're going to take on this approach that is actually very methodical and has a system to it. But when it's all done, it looks like very loose and, and beautiful. Very and organic. Yeah. Looking. So I'm kind of jazzed about it. So here we go. I am going to begin a series of poke roots that loop over this line is going to be our reference point. So. Join me here for a minute with my, my black 01 pen. And I'm going to start right on this sweet spot here. And I'm going to kind of create a stem that starts right on that um, line, but overlaps a little bit. And then I put my little, I guess in this case, is a, like a little parentheses or a um, just a little arc line there. And then I'm going to draw big berry that comes around. And um, I'm sort of, my goal is for this um, stem to be kind of piercing right through the middle there. Now I'm going to repeat and draw another one right above it. Same idea, using that pencil line as a starting point. Cap it off. Again, nice kind of dainty little stem. I feel like the proportion of how thick your stem is to your berries kind of navigates how. And then I think I'm going to do, do one more here. Yeah, it's sort of if you make the stem too thick, then the berry doesn't have as much kind of weight on there. All right, so I have about four berries. You might have more or less, that's okay. There's no like exact number. And now just to have like sort of something playful here, I am going to use this cool line that we put here to draw like a stem that's gonna hold these bunches of poke roots. So at this point now, I'm going to draw over that line, pausing when those 
fairies come along. And now I'm going to aura or double up that line to create a stem that's underneath there. A nice sturdy branch. Right? I'll poke roots. All right. All right, so that's our starting point. I'm going to hand this over to Martha to do the next part. Thank you for trusting me with your poke root plant. Poke root definitely plays well with others, don't you think? I think so. So we're going to um, work with this base stem. It's sort of going to be the center of our plant, if you will. And we're going to grow some more poke root off in either direction using the same technique as Molly just used, but sort of exaggerating the curve of these little cute stems, maybe more than you would to draw poke root in the past. You know, it's that curve as if they're falling off each other. It's a nice, beautiful berry. And they're going to start to take on perhaps a, um, a role of filling in a, a larger kind of a bush, if you will. And I like to go back and forth. And this is definitely, as Molly mentioned, reminiscent of how we work with vertigo when we're drawing vertigo. Just playing around with different directions and layers of berries as they grow out from one another. Peeking behind. And you might want to take note of the size of this tile. It's actually quite big compared to some of our other tiles. It's almost as much space as a Zendala. And we've drawn these berries kind of on the bigger side. So um, take a breath and a moment to sort of look at that proportion of how big these berries are. Because if you start really tiny, you, I mean, mm -hmm. which might also be kind of cool, right. you're going to end up with a lot tinier berries proportionately to the space. It's kind of fun to, you know, open up and draw larger size um, tangles that we're familiar with it makes them feel different right off the bat. And I like how Martha's sort of finding a little bit of rhythm, how she's going back and forth, back and forth um, to each side, but you may find a different rhythm where you go all the way up one side and then all the way down the other. But it is kind of cool to find some sort of a rhythm. Like, you know, your brain is able to sort of like sort of narrow into this routine and you see how the branches are all layering themselves behind one another it's really creating ultimately a, like a, a 3d effect you can see them turning a corner even i also kind of love how you start off like with these like sort of very metered out berries and then once you start filling around them it, it looks very natural and kind of random sort of reminiscent of how nature is really because you, you look at something and you think it looks so random and then you look closely at that flower or that bunch of berries and you're like it, it's all metered out it all has this what they say divine proportion you can see how this, just this design or idea or concept, you can almost go on forever. I know, right? Very cool. So I'm going to put a few more in, and maybe I'll have Molly come back and... I don't know. You're doing such a nice job. I would say keep going. This might be a moment where you do, you know, put that tile arm's length and um, kind of be like, oh, maybe I'll put a few more here or there. 
our vision wasn't to fill the whole tile, but rather to kind of like create this little stem of cluster. A it's a cluster. Yeah, a cluster of hope roots. Maybe at this point you think um, adding a few of different proportion. We talked about drawing a little oversize, but you can kind of sprinkle in some smaller berries as well. See how they kind of add to the proportion of everything. I love how these spaces left behind are perfect for a stem to peek through. Maybe they're reaching for the sun. Very cool. And so we just use those original kind of markers to kind of give us an idea of where we wanted to play with the beginning of where our poke roots started. And then even just this becomes like sort of a sweet spot as where your visual um, or your eye is, is finding yourself. It is very fun. So the magic here would be to decide where it ends. Right. Kind of close, I think. Yeah, I like that. It looks very cute, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe you want to fill in some of the background. Yeah, I was going to. Ink. Once you get like the majority of your poke root berries in here, I like to then go back in and sort of add a little bit of love. And I think first, I think Martha, we need like a little, a little a extra, stray. a little stray over here, maybe. Maybe just one. Okay. So what I like to do is kind of go in and sometimes I ink in Some of these like smaller interstices, I just add a little bit of black there and it sort of, um, as you can see, starts to sort of make the, the tangle pop a little bit more. I might not do the bigger spaces, but some of these tinier ones. Yeah, just along the, the, yeah. the branch. I said I wasn't going to do all of them, but it's hard to stop, I know. Well, maybe I'll leave that one. And then another thing I sometimes do is I, like Martha was saying, I'll sometimes go in and, and just add a little, um, it's what we call rounding. But I'll just add this little bit of ink sort of in these little interstices. And again, you end up revisiting some of your lines and it just makes for a more graphic kind of interesting, more finished sort of looks. When we teach our classes, we will add this, we actually leave in time in our schedule to go back and add love. And when you rush through every minute and sort of account for every second of creating, you don't often think about that time needed to go back and sculpt and sort of add layers of I guess layers of sort of that finishing process with sanding and honing and all that. So it almost turns it like some of the more gestural things into something that um, has more confidence. And so once we finish adding in any darkening or any love that you want to add, like we're going to start putting in some color and some some graphite. But anytime you've just added a bunch of ink, I do always recommend making sure that your, your ink is dry. Sometimes in the humidity, it can take a while and you just don't want to kind of drag that ink into the rest of your tile. So just make sure you've given that a little bit of time before you add any, any color. It's a nice opportunity for a stretch. Yeah, right? So now we get to play with some color, which is always fun, right? Mm -hmm. Good time. And as Molly said earlier, we purposefully gave people different colors, not necessarily what we were using. 
to prove a few things. One of them is it doesn't really matter which color. It's what, what you're attracted to or it's what you're handed, so you're going to make it beautiful. And we think that the mosaics will be incredible too, just seeing yeah. all the different variations of color. So I'm going to choose, I'm gonna start working with this lavender color, very pretty. And you'll notice that sometimes what you look at on the pencil tip doesn't actually what comes out on our um, tile. So you might wanna play around with it on the back of your tile for a minute and just kind of get familiar with the colors and how they might play with each other. Um, or just go for it and take a risk. You'll notice um, right off the bat that I'm, gonna, I'm holding the pencil in kind of an odd way. Certainly if you have a more comfortable way for you, that's fine. Um, but we do like to recommend that we work on the side edge of your pencil. It's a softer delivery of the, of the chalk and it kind of aids in the blending process afterwards. So I'm going to go and work I'm gonna work in essence kind of behind these poke roots on the right here. And remember that this pencil technique, like others we use, is can be done in layers. So, you know, start out with a certain amount of color and keep in mind that you can always go back and add deeper, darker hues, even after you've blended it if that's something that feels right to you. So I'm working my way down the uh, this branch and then behind the berries. And my idea is to, is to work pretty much on this whole right side of the tile. I'm gonna be looking to only put the color on this side, um, playing around with that, those you know opposites of light and dark and color and no color even. So from here, just because I'm, I'm wanting to see how this, this color, um, how it takes to the paper once I start blending, I'm picking up one of my tortillons, nice and fresh and brand new. And again, with the same type of technique, I'm working on the edge of it, not necessarily on the point of it. So of course, I want my tortillon to last me a while. And using that beautiful sharp tip, I'm carefully working my way around the berries, blending and kind of, I'm, I'm varying my pressure that I'm putting on the paper. I, I like that darker edge that sort of falls behind because it's darker and then spreading it out so I get a few different shades of this pretty lavender. I mean, all the colors are so pretty, but I'm sure whichever color you're working with is making you smile as well. So now I'm going to pick up, I'll use this one, the it's called yellow ochre. It's a little bit of a lighter color in general. And I'm going to start to, I don't know, just add some texturing color, pops of color. And I don't really have a plan on where they're going to go, but I think I'll just start to um, add some little chunks of color here and there and see how it plays. It's like it gives you this cool like modeling or sort of, um, I don't know, it's like a painted sky, it is. you know. It's like this amazing sky where the colors come in and out and they subtly morph from one to the next. And I'm going to pick up a, a fresh white um, tortillon and Again, to see how these colors blend. Maybe they mix a little, maybe they stay sharp. Maybe you leave a little white space um, between where they intermingle. 
there's definitely like a lot of room for exploration exploration yeah in, um, for sure when you start doing this but it's like i don't know there's something neat about having this really cool work through background and then having the the, the tangle sort of sit that's very, that's very pretty well i guess a lot like a, a beautiful sky you know it can be the focus it could also be just the background that you you don't even realize how it's adding to your visual, you know, enjoyment. So I might just kind of toggle back and forth between these two lovely colors. I'm using a lighter touch now, kind of sprinkling some bits of color here and there. As Molly said, you know, you may have some other technique that you're wanting to lay down your color. Maybe it looks more like marbleized paper. Or maybe you just used one color, but you used very variation of pressures and the amount of chalk you put down. And actually, you can do the same thing with just a graphite pencil. So um, if you didn't have these chalk pencils, maybe you challenge yourself to see like, oh, what can I do with just the, um, all the different shades right. in my graphite pencil and play around with really dark, maybe um, near the edge of the poke root and then ease up in areas and go back and forth. Just playing with the buffing out of the graphite might be a really fun challenge to take on. I think like this kind of playing around is definitely different. What makes these pastel pencils different that, than working with a colored pencil is they sort of have this like kind of blend them in a way or sort of like move them around a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pressing pretty firmly here and moving some colors. I'm trying to overlap some of them and then you know, I, I like the white, how it's playing along in there as well. Maybe add a little more, um, a few more with this lavender uh, shade, but going a little darker again, like we did at the beginning. Starting to take on a little Almost a tie dye effect. Phi dye. Ah, you're turning my head. We have been having a lot of fun with all the phi alliteration. And you certainly could add a little graphite to this color play over here. What about the berries, Molly? What would you like to do with those? Oh, I got plans for the berries, Martha. All right. Very cool. So Martha took the lavender and the, the ochre. So I'm going to play with the last color we have here. And that was a, a scarlet red. This is cool, Martha. Kind of a neat background. So I have this red um, color here. And I am going to add um, just a little bit of color to all of these berries. And because you can really buff out the color. I'm just going to add, I'm really going to kind of go with the side of my pencil a little bit here. And I'm just going to do one from sort of start to finish to show you. So I just put a little red right in the middle there. And then with the tortillon, kind of buff it out a little bit. And um, I'm not even going all the way to the edge, just kind of making it really red right in the middle. And then I'm going to go and, and do that all around. It's quite a transformation from just the black and white. Yeah, it's, it's just a fun to switch it up, right? It's like, it's amazing how far you can go when you don't set, you know, limits, you know, like with mm -hmm. Zentangle in general, we've always 
we have structure and guidelines, but from the start, we've always allowed people to sort of explore and see where it can go. And it's really um, allowed us to learn from all of the people around us and then also just inspire us to be like, oh, what if we did this? What if we did that? And in the beginning, there wasn't a lot of color. We sort of had to explore that, you know, those black and white um, drawings for a long time to just learn more and, and figure out where it was going to go. And then all of a sudden, it started going in these directions where it wasn't about like coloring in like as if it was a coloring book. It was like bringing color. You're bringing attention to your beautiful line. Yeah. I mean, it was like all of a sudden people were adding color in ways that were layering and dimensional and it's just been so cool to watch all the different ways it happens. It isn't just one way, you know, it's just so neat. And, and here we have, are just like sort of offering another way to explore it and play with it. And so some of these, I'm actually just using what was left over on my tortillon. I'm not even, oh, I'm gonna do this little guy down here. All right. All right, so once we have all this color in, I am gonna go back in and add a little bit of graphite. I think it'll add some dimension. So I'm gonna use my graphite pencil and I think I'm gonna just maybe go at the top of this back stem here. Maybe some of these berries that seem like they're behind. I'm not like, I don't want to fill it all with graphite. I'm just trying to create a little bit of depth here and there. And again, just like we talked about with the pastel pencil, I'm using kind of the side of this graphite pencil. And we're just taking our time. And you know, with any of these videos, it's the first time you're doing it and you're watching us and you're drawing and watching. I always encourage you to go and, and, and then do it a second time. And that second time, you're gonna have a little more confidence. You're gonna be a little bit more of aware of what's happening next. And then you might try something different. You might explore it in a different way. It might have just a little bit more familiar. You can either start with a fresh tortillon or I already used red. So I'm kind of going to play with this, the one that had the red on it. I actually enjoy that sort of unexpected combination of things left behind on that tortillon. Right. You know, you might not have designed, you know, a specific color or shade to be blended here or there, but then you see it on the paper and you're like, oh, that looks actually very cool. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of fun. Um, and since you have, you did have a bunch in there, so it's like you could do one that has, the yellow does get muddy quick, but like the blues and the reds, you can kind of play with some layering in those tortillons and say, um, well, in the end, they all become graphite. I know, tortillons. right? <laughs> Seriously. Inevitably. So yeah, this is just adding a little depth. I like, I want to leave some of the white because I think that also adds to it. So I haven't like filled in every space because if you can see kind of those little white sparkles are nice. And then maybe just a little bit down here on my buddy off by himself. Huh. What do you think, Martha? I think it's gorgeous. It's so, so much fun. I know, that was fun. So we had one other one we did earlier, and it's a little, little bit different. So you can see this one, we used a blue and yellow, um, and it had such a, a different look. This one's got like a little more kind of energy towards it. Yeah, play with it, but there is something beautiful about it, sort of sitting in that one little sweet spot, hanging out, um, just being so poke rooty. 
all that stuff. Well, Martha, thanks for joining me. And um, I always have fun drawing with my sister. Yes, we do have a good time. And it's fun to do these things with friends, too. Yeah. If, uh, if that's available to you to sit, sit with a friend and draw, it's um, really so much fun. Good conversations always happen. For sure. All right, well, take care, my friends, and we'll see you around see you soon. soon. Bye. Bye.